coffee is killing you. But before I piss you off too much, let's start with some problems that coffee does solve. Hate your job? Coffee. Big test tomorrow? Coffee. Stuck in a boring conversation? Coffee. Plus, it's the only drug that you and your boss can probably share at the office, unless your boss is really cool. With the 2.25 billion cups of coffee that are consumed every day, it really does seem like the world runs on coffee. I live in the US where we drink over 400 million of those cups, which sounds like a lot, but the US actually ranks 11th among those countries with the highest caffeine consumption, with a rate of about two cups of coffee per person. Sweden actually takes a gold medal with a staggering four cups of coffee per person a day. So back to the US. Well, according to the National Coffee Association, over 64% of our population aged 18 and over drank coffee every single day. You would think that a country with over half of its population drinking a drug would actually regulate it. So how does a country regulate a drug that over half its population is taking? Well, most harmful substances today require a warning label on the packaging listing any harmful effects that it can have or how addictive they can be. For instance, in the US, the FDA has deemed substances such as cigarettes and alcohol harmful to your health and therefore require you, those manufacturing companies to warn their consumers of such health implications. Why? Well, obviously, the government has our best interests at heart and wants us to be really healthy. But if that's the case, then why does coffee not require a warning label? After all, it does share the same attributes as an addictive and harmful drug. Let's take a closer look. What happens to your body when you drink coffee? Your brain creates a chemical called adenosine, which binds to these receptors right here. They tell your brain when to slow down and chill. So the longer you're awake, the more tired you feel because of the adenosine building up. So once it builds up a lot, you begin to feel tired and you go to sleep. And once you sleep, the adenosine levels go way down and makes you feel great again once you wake up. But when you drink coffee over a long period of time, that caffeine begins to compete with the adenosine to bind to those receptors. So it's not eliminating adenosine, it's just taking its place. Then your brain freaks out and goes like, what the fuck? Where do I put all this adenosine? So it begins to make more of these receptors. This is also why you feel like shit when you miss your daily dose of caffeine or you just stop drinking coffee. Because you have all these other receptors that your brain made and it just allows more adenosine to build up over time. Okay, now let's talk about how long coffee lasts in your body. Coffee has a half-life of 6 hours and a quarter life of 12 hours. So if you drink a cup of coffee at 12 p.m. and go to bed at midnight, you're still having about a quarter of a cup of coffee in your system. So how does this affect you? Well, one standard cup of coffee in the evening, and we've done these sort of studies anywhere between 150 to 200 milligrams of caffeine in the evening, will actually reduce the amount of deep sleep that you get that night by about 20%. Now, to put that in context, I would actually have to age you by about 15 or 20 years to decrease that amount of deep sleep by 20%. And guess what you do after that caffeine crash? You drink another cup of coffee and another and another. So now you have a constant flow of caffeine in your bloodstream, which leads to poor quality sleep. Poor quality sleep leads to feeling like shit all the time. And guess what you do when you feel like shit? You drink another cup of coffee, and another, and another. You drink so much that being awake feels like you're asleep. You forgot what really having energy is like because you substituted healthy natural sleep with the synthetic fuel that is coffee. Now you're stuck in a vicious cycle where you get nighttime insomnia followed by a daytime coffee binge to fight off the tiredness caused by the nighttime insomnia followed by a daytime coffee binge to fight the tiredness caused by a nighttime insomnia followed by a daytime coffee binge to fight the tiredness caused by the nighttime insomnia followed by a daytime coffee binge to fight the tiredness caused by a nighttime insomnia According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, every year about 100,000 police reported crashes involve drowsy driving. These crashes result in more than 1,500 fatalities and over 71,000 injuries. I know, I know I'm being a little too dramatic with these statistics, but it wouldn't all be bad if the only thing that you were drinking was caffeine. There's actually something else in your coffee that's killing you, and it's called sugar. 
I know what you're thinking. Not me, Phil. My coffee doesn't have that much sugar. Well, I'm looking right at you, buddy. And I know you don't drink straight black coffee because no one fucking does that. And if you do drink straight black coffee, then who hurt you? Most of us go to a drug dealer and probably order an iced vanilla bullshit drink without even thinking about it. Well, here's what you're actually drinking. To add to the nighttime insomnia, you're also experiencing sugar crashes, which make you feel even more like shit. Also, here's a few other things that sugar does to your body. Some of the negative effects of sugar include increased risk of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease, skin aging, tooth decay, stress, lower immune function. But don't take it from me, you fat fuck. Google it. No, I'm just kidding. But if you do want to go further down the rabbit hole and learn more about the negative effects of sugar, there's a documentary called That Sugar Film, which you can take a look at. It should be on Netflix. Now, let's say you want to drink a little less coffee. Well, how would you go about doing that? I'll link a few videos in the description below that should give you a head start on limiting your caffeine intake. But let's be honest, you're not going to stop drinking coffee and neither will I. And yes, I know coffee's killing me but it just tastes so good. So, here's to feeling good all the time. Here's to feeling good all the time. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this cynical take on coffee. If you want more weird videos like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You might even regret it. Lot of crime, lot of crime. Try to take it from me, must be at your mind.